Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. You want to use your brand new scope to take your first image? Well, today we want to talk about different methods of attaching your camera to your telescope. We're gonna see that some methods are low cost and easy and therefore preferred by beginners. Some are extra precise, used by all the pros out there, whereas other methods are quite out of date. So to give you a quick overview of what's out there and what's possible, just let's go. Okay, okay, when I first used my scope, I instantly took my smartphone and held it in front of the eyepiece. I took some images of the moon and some of Saturn as well. And yes, this is actually the first method and it's called afocal projection. You use your scope with an eyepiece and hold a camera with a camera lens in front of the eyepiece and ready to go. And this can be any camera you like, smartphone, compact camera or anything else. The advantage of this method, you can start right away. Initially there's no additional hardware needed, even though if you want to use your camera more often, most people would buy a camera holder like this one here. And you attach your camera with this screw like this and then attach this end to the scope or the eyepiece. It's a very easy way to hold the camera quite steady and you can align the optical axis of both the camera and the eyepiece during daylight and this way you don't need to fiddle around at night. With such a camera you can take images of the planets and the moon, for those it would be best to take short video files of the target. And if you even use a motorized tracking mount and if your camera can take images in the RAW format, then you can even take and stack images of fainter deep sky objects with a simple compact camera. The light paths within this construction are like this. The scope focuses the light, the eyepiece straighten it again and it leaves the scope in parallel. Okay, and then there should be your eye, uh, aka a lens followed by a sensor. And we simply replace that eye with a camera, again, a lens followed by a sensor, simple as that. By the way, I did a video about the inner structure of scopes and light paths and so on. Click the link above, right there. That all sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Disadvantages? First, with the eyepiece and the lens of your camera, we have a lot of optical components between us and the desired target. First, your primary optical component of the scope, then the, say, four to six lenses of the eyepiece, then the I don't know how many lenses for the complicated optical train of the compact camera, and then your sensor. And every additional lens will bring in additional arrows, diffraction, chromatic aberration, that sort of things. And in the end the image will look kinda blurry or with ugly imperfections at the edges or something like that. And second thing, the construction will likely be quite shaky, even with the camera holder. Focus and alignment need time and can slip at night, nothing cool. And so most, if not all, astrophotographers use another method to avoid all this, and this is called prime focus imaging. And what you do is, remove everything else and attach the, let's say, naked sensor directly to the scope. And this is obviously not possible with the phone or the compact camera, I mean it is, but not within the normal warranty. But with DSLRs you can easily detach the camera lens and attach the camera body directly to the scope no eyepiece, and then you simply use your scope as your main lens. Because your scope is nothing else, a big lens or a mirror, you know what I mean. To attach the camera body of the DSLR to the scope you need some sort of adapter, but that's no devil's work. This is a Canon to T2 adapter. The T2 thread is one of the standard threads within Astro equipment. And you simply click it on the camera like this. And this is the T2 to 2 inch adapter. It converts the T2 thread to the tube with the same diameter than your eyepiece. Yeah, look at that, mine has a fancy filter thread at the end. There I can add additional filters if I wish to. But whatever. And then everything goes into the focuser and you're good to go. There are systems to thread the camera directly to the scope, but whatever way, you simply attach the camera directly to the scope. Nothing to wobble around, no tilt, no shaking, good alignment, bam. Second and biggest benefit of prime focus imaging, you have as few optical components between you and the target as possible. I mean for my Newtonian it's only the main mirror at the end of the tube and the secondary mirror here in the front and that's it. I mean I could add a coma corrector for better images and or a Barlow lens for higher focal lengths for high magnified planets 
But that's all, no endless lenses after lenses within your compact camera. And thereby you optimize your imaging path. Less components means less aberrations, less diffraction, less reflections. That means simple setup and clearer images for you. And all modern dedicated astro cameras work as prime focus cameras. They don't contain a lens at all. You can see the naked sensor chip here with my planetary webcam from ZWO. So professional dedicated astro cameras, here represented by my planetary webcam, normally threads right onto an adapter that can be put into your eyepiece holder. Okay, light paths are like that. Your scope main lens or mirror focuses the light onto a focal point, and that's it. <laughs> you place the sensor right there and that's all. Voila, not very difficult. Okay, okay, okay. So a focal projection and prime focus. Those are the two ways for you to go. Start with a smartphone in front of the eyepiece or and use later a DSLR or dedicated astro imaging camera without anything directly attached to the telescope. I mean, really, we could quit here. But there's another method out there I quickly want to mention. It's called eyepiece projection. Within this method, you attach an eyepiece inside an adapter to your scope and then click the camera without any lenses to this adapter. Uh, so effectively, the eyepiece projection seems to be the same than the afocal projection, but without the camera lens. Um, how does it work? Didn't we say that the lens makes the exiting light parallel again? So how comes that it can reach focus on the sensor nevertheless? Trick is, we move the eyepiece slightly behind the original place, and thereby the focal points don't match and we get a prolonged light path with a new focal point. But why this method? Eyepiece projection magnifies your image a lot, I mean depending on your eyepiece. So it was heavily used for planetary imaging or for moon close-ups. As the quality of the image also heavily depends on the quality of your eyepiece, you should definitely keep an eye on that. Really, I myself haven't seen many eyepiece projection images lately. Most people tend to use a simple Barlow lens to increase the focal length of your scope and then simply opt for prime focus. I go that way too and it works just fine for me. So yeah, that are the three basic methods to attach your scope to the camera. <laughs> Other way around, your camera to the scope. Easiest way, a focal projection, just hold your smartphone in front of the eyepiece. Uh, to go further or to take longer exposures, with that, use an adapter. Most convenient way, prime focus. No nothing between you and your optical component. Your scope simply acts as a lens for your camera. To go further with that, it might be necessary to add so-called Barlow lenses to increase or a reducer lens to decrease the focal length of your scope. But please keep in mind, both lenses can't defeat physics. But a 3x Barlow lens can be handy for planetary and a 0.75x reducer handy for big nebula. And yeah, that's that. A focal projection with a smartphone in front of your eyepiece or prime focus with a naked sensor chip right at the focal point of your imaging system. I hope you got a basic idea of how to use or how to attach your camera to your scope. Always remember though, besides planetary, astro imaging is not about magnification. It's all about getting a clear and smooth image. So normally it's the the less optical components the better rule, okay? So I hope you liked this video, and if you did, maybe tell just one other person, would you? That would be super helpful. Let's grow this channel just a little bit more, shall we? Okay, okay folks, as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.